there's a huge challenge. Let's take a company, a big company. In fact, this company called Tara's Tees. It's one of the world's leading t-shirt retailers. They operate in a fast-paced, crowded market. To set them apart from their competitors, Tara's team decided to develop a new t-shirt. With rising consumer demand for ethical products, they see a gap in the market for a new range of t-shirts made from sustainably sourced cotton. Okay, now 40% of the developing world are employed in agricultural production, like Gurav here. His business grows cotton in Gujarat, India. Gurav doesn't know what prices crops will sell for, or even if they'll sell at all. Water scarcity and pollution are ever-increasing concerns, and inefficient farming techniques put more reliance on harmful agrochemicals. As you can see, it's a hard life for Gurav and his workers, who have few opportunities to improve their livelihoods, their community or their environment. If Tara's team is serious about making sustainable t-shirts, they need to secure a consistent supply of cotton that's produced responsibly by farmers who have reliable income and who have the ability to improve their livelihoods. So why don't Tara's buyers get on the phone to order in those sustainable t-shirts? Unfortunately, it isn't nearly that simple. A complex chain of designers, manufacturers, dyers, weavers, spinners and ginners exists between Tara and Gurav. Oh, and that's not to mention the string of logistics companies and middlemen. We call this perplexing string of interactions the supply chain. It does work, but can it be improved? The other thing to consider is that Gurav doesn't actually have the capacity to deal with a large order, or for that matter, the training and sustainable farming techniques to deliver. As you can see, it's frustrating for producers who can't access international markets, and it's hard for retailers to ensure that their standards are met and that their supply chain is working efficiently. But what would happen if there was an independent organization in each industry that helped to simplify the supply chain? These organizations, let's call them ethical agents, could operate at a global scale. They could help small producers generate more income by providing training and access to international markets, and they could give the retailers a reliable and traceable supply of ethical goods to expand their businesses. Well, as it happens, several of these ethical agents have actually already been market tested in three different types of value chain. These models are still evolving, but let's see where they are now. Let's first take a look at Cotton Connect. They're trying to make things clearer across the entire cotton supply chain, to make the whole system more efficient and also to help the cotton farmers improve their products, livelihoods and the environment. After just two years, they now work with several major high street brands and retailers and have worked with over 50,000 farmers in India and China. But what about other industries, say raspberries for example? Haygrove Heaven are turning their workforce into entrepreneurs, giving them the skills and support to care for their crops, improve their livelihoods and set up their own enterprises. The Better Trading Company take a slightly different approach by giving retailers access to a range of niche products like fresh peas, tea tree oil and rooibos tea, all produced by smallholder farmers in the developing world. They've already had an impact on the complex chili pepper supply chain. These three models show that ethical agents can deliver business benefits to retailers and producers alike. But perhaps what's most exciting is the potential to apply the ethical agent model to other industries around the world, including yours.